not go away. <laughs> oh no, naughty dog. <laughs> You're very distracting. <laughs> I shall be here. Go on then, off you go. Off you go. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm gonna do a video on winter running, coming from the perspective of someone who lives in the UK, which gets relatively cold, but nothing like various parts of further north. We're really lucky here, actually. Generally, the weather is decent for running year round, but that doesn't mean that there aren't things that you can do to make it a little bit better. And we do get plenty of mud and rain and just generally kind of tough conditions. So I'm gonna speak through my top tips for running in the winter as someone who lives in a relatively temperate environment. So my first tip and probably the most important thing is to make sure that you have the right gear. And the first thing I'd mention is shoes. So if you're road running, road shoes are road shoes, there's not really much you can do about that. But if you are trail running, um, something that I mentioned in last week's vlog is to make sure that you have shoes that are suitably grippy with big enough lugs to be able to deal with the muddier conditions, shall we say, that we get here in the UK. There are some really great brands, I think probably Innovate and Salomon are the two best ones. I have the X Talons from Innovate and then there's the Mud Claws as well, which are really great and the Rock Lights, which are a little bit less luggy, but really good for kind of mixed terrain and then there are salmon ones as well that are brilliant for very muddy conditions that we have here in the UK. And I would just say that it's really beneficial to have a couple of pairs of shoes on rotation so that when your trainers get wet, you can still have a pair of shoes that are sort of relatively dry to slip into for your next run. In terms of clothing, it's recommended to dress for about 10 degrees warmer than the actual temperature because of course you are gonna heat up as you start to run and it can be a little bit uncomfortable to be going Going outside and it's something that you get used to uh, slowly <laughs> as you start to get into running a little bit more. It's something that I'm still not quite used to. I hate going out in the cold but I dress for 10 degrees warmer and then I warm up into it and it's good incentive to actually just get moving because otherwise you stay cold. And then layering is your best friend. You do not want one thick layer, you want lots of different layers. Make sure that they're technical layers and not things like cotton because once cotton gets wet from sweat or rain it cools you down really really quick. And so that's something you want to be careful of and that's another reason that you dress for about 10 degrees warmer than it actually is Because if you sweat too much then that cools your body right down Especially if you slow down or if there's a lot of wind or a bit of a breeze that can cool you down a little bit more than you want to So make sure you're layered up and I find things like gloves a buff and ear warmers to be really useful Because I can have them on at the beginning of the run and then stash them away Put them on my wrist or whatever for later on in the run without having to take loads of extra extra layers that take up loads of space. And they keep your extremities warm, which is the really important thing, especially for me, I have Raynaud's, so my hands get very cold in winter and just keeping those warm helps keep the rest of me warm. If you do a lot of trail running, as I imagine a lot of you guys do, I personally don't love waterproof trainers. I used to think they were great, but I spent long enough running now to realize that as soon as you go in a puddle deep enough, and there are lots of them around, the water goes into your shoes and then just doesn't come back out again. So I like just normal trainers that are breathable and then if I am doing something that is really wet and I really 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 don't want to get my feet too wet then waterproof socks are probably the best bet and seal skins have probably the best waterproof socks out there and they are still breathable which is really important because you don't want really sweaty feet. But generally I mean everyone just says your skin is waterproof and it is true that actually your skin's probably the most waterproof thing you can have so it doesn't really matter. I think once you've gone through a couple of puddles you just don't really care anymore and your feet do heat up as you're running because of the friction and because of the blood pumping around your body so you're not going to get too cold but if you do really hate getting wet feet then the seal skin socks is probably the best bet. Waterproofs is something that there's kind of two camps on. Some people again are just on the camp like your skin is waterproof, don't worry about it. 
it but then we do get some really really rainy weather and when it is cold it can cool you down super quickly it is possible to get hypothermia and surprisingly high temperatures if you get wet and you are tired so just make sure to have a waterproof with you if it is looking like it's going to rain loads and you're planning on being out for a really long time especially as you get tired your body finds it harder to keep warm and to uh, warm up once it's got cold as well so there are lots of different waterproofs out there it's really quite hard to find a good one. I have one from Nonstop Dogwear, which is amazing. I think Innovate do some good ones and Compress Sport do a really great one, but none of them are cheap. If you find a cheap waterproof, it's likely either not waterproof or feels like a bin bag and is not breathable. So just keep an eye out for the good brands when they do discounts. And of course, the last thing about kit is high vis. Obviously it's a lot darker in winter. We don't get so many hours of daylight. Just make sure that you're visible. This is for your own safety and also for people driving their cars just so that they can see you properly and you can have extra lights there are lots of things that you can attach to your bags just to make sure that you're high vis but just don't go out wearing all black please my second tip is to warm up and start slow so I'm not a massive fan of doing all this warm-up routine unless I'm racing and going really fast out of the blocks in winter I think warming up is really important especially if you're sitting down all day and then you want to immediately get out just because the temperature is so much colder and your muscles are going to take longer to warm up so it's really good to kind of have a little bit of a dynamic stretch at the beginning of your run or at the very least start your run slow and ease into it and that will just help your body get moving properly. So probably the most common question I get asked about cold weather running is about ice and snow on the ground and there's not so much you can do to avoid that but one thing that I have really found helps is by doing trail running rather than road running. So roads get really slippery, quite often the road is gritted but the pavements aren't so you end up having having to take tiny steps and the chances of injury are actually quite high. But the trails, yes, they are very muddy, but the colder it gets, the more that mud freezes and actually they're a lot grippier than the roads are. So once you get below freezing, actually trail running is a lot less dangerous, in my opinion, than road running. So if you can head to the trails, I'd really recommend doing that. But my fourth tip is in lieu of that, and if you are really struggling to get out while it's still light outside, is do treadmill running. I think there is a lot of snobbery around treadmill running. People say it's not real running, that you don't have to try as hard. And there definitely is an aspect of that, but it's still running. You're still doing a cardiovascular exercise. It's really great as well if you just wanna kind of bash out some miles without having to think of where you're gonna run, without having to think of what's safe, without having to worry about snow, ice, safety from other people, running in the dark, getting lost, all that kind of stuff. And also brilliant as well if you wanna get in a gym session at the same time, which is what I do. But treadmill running is so valuable. I do it all the time at the moment because I really need to manage my pace and my heart rate and uh, in the hills around Bristol that's actually really difficult to do without being on the treadmill. So treadmill running is definitely not necessarily a last resort. It is actually really valuable especially if you can't get out in the middle of the day and have to do early morning or late at night. I just think treadmill running is a brilliant alternative to outdoor running just to stay safe. My next tip is maybe a little controversial but it's massively helped me and that is to try nose breathing. So there are lots of different benefits to nose breathing. The air goes in a little bit slower so you can extract more oxygen from it but not everyone agrees that it is better for runners and there are kind of two camps here and it can be really difficult. It probably took me about two weeks of forcing myself to do it to actually feel like I could breathe properly but it really helped me keep my runs at an aerobic pace at a conversational pace and keep them slow enough on recovery and easy runs. But the benefit of doing this in winter is that it warms and humidifies the air as it goes into your lungs. So if you are someone who ends up coughing violently at um, when, as soon as you go outside in the freezing cold, you know that horrible feeling where it kind of catches in your chest and in your lungs, um, nose breathing could really help you out with this. And I don't get that feeling since I started nose breathing, which was back in 2019. And now I never breathe through my mouth on runs unless I'm in the anaerobic zone. So sort of zones four and zones five for example on later stages of doing intervals and if you find it really unpleasant like if your nose gets really cold you can almost get brain freeze from it if you put a buff around your nose then it will heat up the air slightly very very slightly just before it goes into your nose which will then heat it up further before it goes into your lungs this is something that's helped me massively one thing that I would say is that if you wear a buff for too long 
it freezes because of the moisture coming in and out. So I kind of do this right at the very beginning of my run just while it's really unpleasant and while I'm really cold. And then I take it off or just move it down to my neck to keep my neck warm, but without like freezing my face. Um, and that's something that I found to be really useful. My penultimate tip is to join a running club or to run with friends. And this is more about motivation, but also a little bit about safety. It can be so hard to get out when it is really cold and raining and pitch black outside. But knowing that you are going to see people who are not necessarily relying on you, but kind of expecting you to be there or doing a particular session or running to the pub or whatever can be really valuable for maintaining motivation. It's also great because you don't have to think about the route you're going to take. You don't have to worry about the distances or the pace because you're just there to kind of have fun and chat and whatever. And I love to meet up with friends, especially for early morning runs. I have my dog can across group, which Prior to EBV, I was going running with them twice a week and those miles were like free miles for me because I just didn't think about them at all because I was just there enjoying myself, having fun, making sure the dog was having fun. Uh, she's behind me here just staring at me because I keep saying the word run. And, and basically just kind of enjoying myself and getting out there without actually really having to self-motivate because I just knew that every Wednesday morning and every Saturday or Sunday morning, I was gonna be out there with those people and they were expecting me to be there. So I just didn't have to think about it at all. And that is especially useful in winter when it's cold and dark and wet and kind of a little bit gross. And the last tip I would have is to warm up really quickly post run. I don't know about you guys, but I cool down super quickly after a run. But because I'm a little bit warm when I come in the house, it's all too easy to go and sit on the sofa and just sort of flop there. And then I get really cold really quickly. What it is best to do is while you're still up and standing, just go and jump straight in the shower or the bath and heat yourself up and then put on loads of warm layers. It is really easy to get cold when you're tired and when you've been out for a really long time. So just be careful. And also if you cool down really quickly and don't move at all, your muscles are gonna hurt a lot. So it's in your best interest to kind of cool down slowly and then warm up as much as possible. And even if you want to have a little bit of a stretch, I've started doing yoga, which is amazing. I'm not doing very much running, mind, but I am really enjoying my yoga and I have found that it reduces my doms from my gym sessions. So there's a good chance that it would do the same from running. So that's it, those are all of my tips. Running in winter is sometimes difficult. I know a lot of people really love it and I love my weekend runs. Longer runs in winter are just the bomb because you're not overheating. You can actually get some pretty fast times and it's really cool to be able to kind of form your own body heat. You know, everyone's out there in their puffer jackets and their hats and their snoods and everything. And you're just there in like shorts and a, and a long sleeve top and it's kind of fine. I just think that's really cool and I really enjoy it, but then it's so difficult if I have to get up before work or go out after work to kind of get that motivation. So I hope these tips help. One thing I would say is if you're starting running in winter, then by the time you get to spring, you will have formed an unbreakable habit. And if you can do it in this weather, then you can do it in spring where the days start to get longer and it's a little bit warmer and the leaves are on the trees and oh, it's just gonna be amazing. So try and build that habit over winter. And if you can do it now, you can do it at any point. So good luck. I hope you enjoy it. I hope these tips were helpful. I would love to hear if you have any tips, so make sure to stick them in the comments below. Also, don't forget to come and follow me over on Instagram. I'll be sharing my own training and I am getting back to it slowly, slowly, which is really great. And also getting some PBs in the gym, which is very exciting for me because I've been doing a little bit more gym work recently. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. I would love if you guys would share my videos with friends of yours, friends and family, and I hope this is helpful for all of you. So that is it for this week and I will see you next time. Bye.